The actor Timothy West has died at the age of 90. His family have put out a statement announcing the news. Let's bring in our arts and entertainment correspondent, Katie Spencer. Uh, and Katie, uh, uh, you had a long career. Yeah. He was married to Penelope Scales for some 61 years. Uh, can you very yeah, I, I think a lot of people actually in recent years um, would have been particularly touched by the, the series that he made on Channel 4 with Prunella Scales. It was one of his sort of very recent TV successes, Great Canal Journeys, mm -hmm. which just, just showcased the, the love that he had for his wife, the Forty Towers star. Um. Hello and welcome. Today we come together to celebrate and honor the legacies of four American legends who died today. Let's pause to reflect on the unforgettable mark they've left on our world through their passion, talent, and dedication. Join us in paying tribute, offering heartfelt condolences to their families, and preserving their memory by liking and subscribing. What's the matter with you? You're deliberately trying to sabotage it, you Russian snobs! Isn't the Georgian folk song good enough for you? Timothy West, the celebrated British stage and television actor, passed away peacefully on November 12, 2024, at age 90, leaving an irreplaceable void in the hearts of fans and loved ones alike. Known for his commanding presence, soulful eyes, and distinguished resonant voice, Timothy's performances spanned both historical figures and classical characters, resonating with audiences across generations. His passing marks not only the loss of a gifted actor, but the farewell of a cherished companion who brought characters to life with intensity and heart, as if he were a lifelong friend. Born on October 20th, 1934, in Bradford, England, to actors Lockwood West and Olive Carlton Crow, Timothy grew up with an early affinity for the arts. Despite his parents' initial discouragement, he pursued his love for acting, going from humble beginnings in regional theaters to becoming a defining figure on the British stage. After brief stints as an office furniture salesman and a recording technician, he found his way into the world of theater as an assistant stage manager in 1956, and soon after, his career began to flourish. Timothy's breakthrough came with his portrayal of King Edward VII in the 13-part series Edward VII, 1975 where he embodied the life of the king from a young age through to his final days. This role brought him to the attention of television audiences worldwide and led to numerous acclaimed portrayals of historical figures, including Winston Churchill, a role he performed with depth and authenticity in Churchill and the Generals, 1979, The Last Bastion, 1984, and Hiroshima, 1995. In addition to his stage prowess, Timothy appeared in numerous films, including The Day of the Jackal, 1973, Cry Freedom, 1987, and The Messenger, The Story of Joan of Arc, 1999. His contributions to Shakespearean theater were equally iconic, with multiple performances as King Lear, Macbeth, and Falstaff. He had a celebrated career with the Royal Shakespeare Company and Prospect Theater Company, working alongside legends like Ian McKellen, Derek Jacoby, and Glenda Jackson. Audiences marveled at his versatility, particularly his four portrayals of King Lear, the last of which he performed in 2016 at age 81 at the Bristol Old Vic, a testament to his dedication to his craft. Beyond the stage, Timothy and his wife, actress Prunella Scales, became beloved for their real-life adventures on Great Canal Journeys, a Channel 4 series that brought viewers along as they navigated Britain's canals. The show became more than just a travelogue, offering a poignant view of their enduring romance while candidly depicting Prunella's journey with Alzheimer's. Timothy's unwavering support of his wife moved audiences deeply, showing his strength and devotion, not only as an actor but as a loving husband and carer. Their shared love for waterways also made Timothy a passionate advocate for the Canal and River Trust and the Inland Waterways Association, inspiring countless viewers to explore Britain's beautiful canal network. Timothy's influence extended beyond his personal accomplishments. He served as an artistic director for the Forum Theatre in Billingham and as president of the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art, Lambda, for over 30 years, shaping generations of young actors. His contributions to the arts were formally recognized in 1984 
when he was awarded a CBE for his services to drama. His passing has drawn tributes from family, fans, and industry colleagues. In a heartfelt statement, his children, Juliet, Samuel, and Joseph, expressed gratitude for the love and care he received in his final days, remarking, After a long and extraordinary life on and off the stage, our darling father Timothy West died peacefully in his sleep. On social media, fellow actor Giles Brandreth wrote, A marvelous man, a marvelous actor, husband, father, friend. He was just the best. Broadcaster Angela Rippon praised Timothy's role in normalizing dementia through Great Canal Journeys, calling him an amazing advocate who encouraged audiences to face the illness with courage and resilience. One of Timothy's final performances was as Charles Usher in Sister Boniface Mysteries, 2023, a fitting conclusion to a career that spanned over six decades and enriched both British and international drama. Timothy West's legacy is more than the sum of his roles or accolades. It's a tribute to a life well lived, marked by love, commitment, and an enduring passion for storytelling. As fans, family, and friends mourn his loss, they also celebrate the timeless impact he leaves behind, ensuring that his spirit will forever live on in the art he so deeply cherished. Um, U.S. Airlines that fly this airplane put 150 or fewer seats on this plane. Some do 146, 140. Ben Baldanza once described airline management as akin to a board game a complex dance of risks, resources, and strategic choices. This analogy encapsulates the audacious journey he led, transforming the airline industry with both grit and relentless innovation. With a bold vision and a resilient spirit, he didn't just make air travel more affordable, he redefined it, forever changing how people thought about budget flying. This pioneering force left us on November 5th, 2024 at the age of 62 after courageously battling ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease. Basil Ben Baldanza Jr., born December 3, 1961 in Rome, New York, took a unique path from his early love of music to the airline industry. Raised in an Air Force family, he grew up valuing hard work and dedication. Though he initially dreamed of a musical career, his studies in economics at Syracuse University in Princeton ultimately led him to American Airlines in 1986, where he was part of CEO Robert Crandall's Brat Pack of young executives shaping the industry. From American to Taka and eventually Spirit Airlines, Ben built a career on innovation and a commitment to making air travel accessible. It was at Spirit that Baldanza's impact truly took flight. Joining as president and COO in 2005, he inherited a struggling company and reimagined it with a bare fare pricing model, inspired by Ryanair, that charged for all services beyond a basic seat. Under his leadership, Spirit's base fare dropped to $75 by 2013, making it one of the most profitable airlines while democratizing air travel. Ben was unapologetic in his approach, proudly calling Spirit the dollar store in the sky and creating a culture of affordability. Through memorable ads, like the risque Viner sale offering $9 fares with the tagline, Too Hard to Resist. He positioned Spirit as an industry disruptor unafraid of pushing boundaries. But not all moves were received positively. His strict refund policy, particularly in a 2012 incident involving a terminally ill veteran, attracted criticism. The ensuing backlash led Ben to issue an apology and a donation to a veteran's charity demonstrating a rare moment of retraction for a man who rarely wavered in his beliefs. Beyond spirit, Ben's impact extended to academia and philanthropy. As an adjunct professor at George Mason University, he inspired future economists with his passion for strategic management. His love for board games, a collection he donated to local groups in his later years, was a reflection of his belief in managing risks and resources both in games and in business. In 2023, he received the Joseph S. Murphy Award from Air Transport World, and in 2024, he was awarded the Wright Brothers Memorial Trophy in recognition of his profound influence on the airline industry. Despite the progression of ALS, Ben remained engaged in the industry through his podcast, Airlines Confidential.
using AI software to recreate his voice even as his physical abilities waned. Tributes have since poured in from across the industry. Scott McCartney, his podcast co-host, called Ben a visionary who made airline travel affordable for millions. The National Aeronautic Association noted that Ben's achievements reshaped an entire industry. Though Ben Baldanza's life was cut short, his legacy soars. His contributions continue to inspire leaders and open the skies to travelers worldwide. In every low-cost flight, there's a bit of Ben's pioneering spirit, forever changing the way we fly. News 1. The Untold Trials and Triumphs of Simon Cowell In the world of entertainment, few figures have left as indelible a mark as Simon Cowell. Known both for his cutting critiques and his transformative influence on global pop culture, Simon's journey from industry underdog to one of television's most recognizable faces has been anything but ordinary. At 64, he is celebrated for his sharp wit and often controversial demeanor on shows like American Idol, The X Factor, and Britain's Got Talent. His story is one of raw ambition, challenges, and the creation of a cultural empire that has changed the landscape of entertainment. Simon's career wasn't always as glamorous as it might seem today. Born in London in 1959, Cowell grew up with an early love for music, but struggled to find his path. The son of an estate agent and a ballet dancer, he was expected to take a conventional career path. Yet, a role as a runner on The Shining working for Stanley Kubrick hinted at the remarkable journey that lay ahead. By 17, he was already gaining industry experience, though his independent streak and rebellious nature made him difficult to manage. After years of jumping from job to job, his father, an EMI executive, arranged for him to work in the company's mailroom. It was here that he began developing his knack for recognizing talent, though it wasn't until later, in his role as a talent scout and music producer, that Simon would rise to true prominence. Cowell's big break came with his role on Pop Idol, the British show that would set the tone for a new era in reality television. Pop Idol offered a platform where undiscovered talent could be discovered by millions, and Simon's blunt, often brutal honesty became a hallmark of the show. Audiences couldn't get enough of his direct, no-nonsense approach, and his critiques, though frequently harsh, set him apart from other judges. By the time American Idol hit U.S. screens in 2002, Simon was already a cultural sensation, known as much for his polarizing commentary as his eye for talent. It was here he famously launched careers, from Kelly Clarkson to Carrie Underwood, making him an influential figure in the music world. Yet it was with the X Factor that Simon achieved his most significant triumph. Establishing the show in both the UK and the US, he offered a platform for a broader range of talent and cultivated global stars such as One Direction, Little Mix, and Leona Lewis. His record label, Psycho, signed each of these acts, generating a new wave of pop phenomena. Simon's unique ability to recognize market potential and nurture talent extended well beyond music, setting new standards for television formats. In 2014, the X Factor franchise was named the most successful reality TV format by Guinness World Records, with versions in over 50 countries. Cowell's influence hasn't been without controversy. His blunt honesty, while celebrated, often veered into territory that some considered cruel. His critiques could sting, leaving contestants in tears, and he openly admitted that he didn't want to be nice, but rather to give people what they needed to hear. This approach earned him as much criticism as praise. He was famously known to say, I don't mean to be rude, but... Before delivering devastating critiques, from declaring someone the worst singer in the world to making contestants question their career choices. Beyond the television screen, Cowell's personal life has also been a topic of public fascination. Known for his relationships with high-profile women and his affair with his friend's wife, Lauren Silverman, who would later become his partner, Simon has faced intense media scrutiny. His story with Lauren, while criticized, transformed his life. Their son, Eric, born in 2014, 
brought Simon a newfound joy and balance. In interviews, he has said that becoming a father saved him, helping him overcome years of depression after the loss of his parents. His partner and son have become central figures in his life, grounding him in a way that few expected from the once notorious playboy. Simon's influence on pop culture cannot be overstated. His shows have introduced the world to viral sensations, like Susan Boyle and Fifth Harmony, and he has helped shift how audiences view talent shows. While he once said he didn't expect contestants to become global stars, his track record suggests otherwise. Today, his protégés are some of the most successful artists in the industry, and his keen eye for talent has earned him a place among the most influential figures in entertainment. Despite his success, Cowell has faced significant struggles. In recent years, he has openly discussed his battles with depression and the impact of losing both parents. The loss of his mother in 2015 hit him particularly hard, sending him into a spiral that left him questioning the very meaning of his achievements. His relentless work schedule became an escape from grief, but in the end, he credits his son, Eric, with helping him find peace. Today, he remains dedicated to his work but has found a healthier balance, often seen riding bikes, a hobby that led to a severe accident, but also to a renewed commitment to his well-being. Simon's legacy extends beyond the music and television industry. He has long been involved in charitable causes, from supporting children's hospices to organizing fundraising events. His charity single, Bridge Over Troubled Water, recorded for the victims of the Grenfell Tower fire, reached number one in the UK singles chart, reflecting his commitment to using his platform for good. In a career spanning decades, Simon Cowell has shaped the entertainment industry in ways few could have predicted. He has turned reality television into a cultural phenomenon, given voice to artists who might otherwise have gone unheard, and made the role of the celebrity judge an iconic part of modern media. Through controversy, personal challenges, and incredible achievements, Simon has remained unapologetically himself a man who rose from modest beginnings to redefine an entire industry. His journey is far from over, and as he continues to push boundaries, his story serves as a reminder that resilience, vision, and a willingness to embrace both success and failure can create a legacy that endures. Simon's influence on pop culture cannot be overstated. His shows have introduced the world to viral sensations, like Susan Boyle and Fifth Harmony, and he has helped shift how audiences view talent shows. While he once said he didn't expect contestants to become global stars, his track record suggests otherwise. Today, his protégés are some of the most successful artists in the industry, and his keen eye for talent has earned him a place among the most influential figures in entertainment. Despite his success, Cowell has faced significant struggles. In recent years, he has openly discussed his battles with depression and the impact of losing both parents. The loss of his mother in 2015 hit him particularly hard, sending him into a spiral that left him questioning the very meaning of his achievements. His relentless work schedule became an escape from grief, but in the end, he credits his son, Eric, with helping him find peace. Today, he remains dedicated to his work but has found a healthier balance often seen riding bikes, a hobby that led to a severe accident, but also to a renewed commitment to his well-being. In early 1968, while struggling through harsh Seattle winters, Linda and David found themselves living in a drafty house with no money and limited food, a time that would become the foundation of White Bird. This hauntingly beautiful song, with its imagery of a caged white bird longing for freedom, became both a product of their struggles and a symbol of the era's desire to transcend the boundaries of conventional life. Released in 1969, the song was a modest commercial success but found an eternal life as an underground classic, embodying the longing, beauty, and challenges of the 60s counterculture. Yet, while the song soared, the marriage did not, and Linda and David divorced shortly after its release. As David remarried another Linda, creating an unusual twist in the band's lineup, Linda Laflamme pursued her own musical journey. Linda's influence extended beyond her brief tenure with It's a Beautiful Day. She led two other bands, Titus's Mother and A Thought in Passing, though they remained relatively unknown. Her true creative spirit shone later in her career, 
when she dedicated herself to composing music for Bay Area theatrical companies in the 1970s. Adopting her Hebrew name, Neska, she also became a dedicated teacher, inspiring future generations with the same passion for music that had driven her from the beginning. Colleagues and collaborators recall Linda as an artist of boundless talent and dedication. Her former bandmates often cited her creativity as the keystone of It's a Beautiful Day's unique sound. Her fans, though many never had the privilege of seeing her live, express gratitude for the impact her music has had on their lives. Messages of tribute have poured in from those whose lives were touched by White Bird, a song that, even today, remains a serene reminder of a time when music was a means of liberation. Perhaps one of the most poignant stories about Linda was her description of her marriage to David, a union bound more by music than by romantic connection. She once reflected, what we didn't realize is that we were connected so musically that we were not connected in the sense that married people had this love. I mean, I love David, but our connection was so through the music. In this statement lies the heart of Linda's life, a connection to music so intense that it became her identity, a bond that defined and transcended her relationships. As we reflect on Linda Laflamme's life, we see a portrait of resilience, talent, and the unyielding pursuit of artistic freedom. Her contributions to music and theater will continue to resonate, reminding us of an era marked by the search for self and the promise of freedom. Her music, her life, and her legacy are testaments to the idea that, like the white bird she sang of, some spirits can never be caged. The memory of Linda Laflamme, an artist whose soul thrived in each note and chord, will live on inspiring those who seek beauty and transcendence in a world too often defined by limits. News 2. From Fame to Firestorms. The Resilient Legacy of Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman, an iconic figure in the world of cinema, is more than just an actor with a resonant, unforgettable voice. He's a storyteller whose powerful performances have inspired audiences worldwide. At 87, Freeman's journey spans over five decades, marked by countless accolades, from an Oscar to the Screen Actors Guild Life Achievement Award, each one a testament to his unparalleled artistry. Born on June 1, 1937 in Memphis, Tennessee, Freeman began his journey into acting early on. Despite a youth spent moving from one place to another, he harbored a profound love for the stage, driven by an unyielding passion for performance. Those early years were challenging. Freeman played key roles in children's television and modest theater productions, making ends meet while sharpening his craft. The true turning point came with his portrayal of Fast Black and Street Smart, a role that earned him his first Academy Award nomination and showcased his range in portraying complex, morally nuanced characters. This performance paved the way for subsequent standout roles in Driving Miss Daisy, The Shawshank Redemption, and Million Dollar Baby where Freeman captured audiences with a rare blend of depth, humility, and quiet intensity. He won his first Oscar for his role in Million Dollar Baby, solidifying his status as a legend in the film industry. Freeman's career is marked not only by his achievements, but by his willingness to take risks and challenge stereotypes. From portraying historical icons like Nelson Mandela in Invictus, to lending his voice to documentaries such as March of the Penguins and The Story of God, Freeman's work has transcended the boundaries of cinema, influencing cultural conversations around spirituality, resilience, and the human experience. His distinctive voice has become synonymous with wisdom, guiding audiences through complex topics and encouraging a deeper reflection on life. Yet Freeman's path has not been without struggles. He faced controversies and allegations that cast a shadow over his esteemed career. Freeman responded with both a commitment to transparency and a heartfelt apology to anyone who felt uncomfortable due to his actions. The public response was mixed. Some showed unwavering support, while others questioned his legacy. Still, Freeman continued to work, addressing each setback with dignity, refusing to let these moments define his life's work. In recent years, Freeman has remained relevant, evolving his artistry and exploring new roles. His appearances in projects like The Story of Us and Our Universe 
demonstrate a continued commitment to storytelling that resonates with audiences of all generations. Whether he's narrating the vast cosmos or appearing on screen with longtime collaborator Clint Eastwood, Freeman's legacy is that of an artist who finds power in resilience. Freeman's influence on the entertainment industry is profound. He's inspired countless actors with his ability to embody every character with authenticity and integrity. His career is a beacon of perseverance for those facing adversity, a reminder that, like the characters he so often portrays, true strength is found in the journey. As Freeman's story continues to unfold, his impact remains timeless, his voice a guide for audiences everywhere. Through each triumph and setback, Freeman reminds us that life isn't about sidestepping hardship, but rising above it, reaffirming that we all hold the power to shape our own narratives. Today, we've reflected on five remarkable lives and careers, each leaving an indelible mark on the world. Timothy West's masterful stage presence, Ben Baldanza's transformation of budget air travel, Simon Cowell's powerful role in pop culture, Linda Laflamme's musical legacy, and Morgan Freeman's timeless voice in cinema have all contributed lasting gifts of creativity, resilience, and passion. Whether they are still with us or live on through their work, their contributions continue to inspire and connect us. Share your memories and reflections in the comments below. Who among them has made the greatest impact on you? Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more stories that celebrate the lives and legacies of these extraordinary figures.